There are cheers for a person named Anna Scott, a famous and well-known actress. The beautiful woman with a dazzling smile is shown being in various magazines, attending parties, and whatnot. A British man walks through the market, talking about how he knew the actress, but never really imagined that he would have anything to do with her. He lives in Notting Hill, a place in the UK. The young man, in his British accent, specifies the various people living in the neighborhood. He tells of how he lives in this small town, his door painted blue, and what he and his wife did, before she left him for another man. And now the young man lives with a tenant, who shows him what shirt he should wear on a date, all of which are weirdly not good. But then the raggedy British man comes wearing a shirt, that calls his date the most beautiful woman in the world. He goes along with that. William, the main guy walks into a travel bookstore, where he works. They do not make many sales however and the cost of the shop is an ample amount, making the man grimace. William's subordinate asks to get the man a cup of cappuccino, and William agrees, only if he gets half a cup, because that's how much he can afford. Someone walks into the bookstore at that moment, and as William looks up, he tries to peer at the woman's face. It is just so peculiar to see customers, he is intrigued. He asks if he can help her with anything, still not able to see her full face as it is hidden by the bookshelf, but even as he sees her, he cannot recognize her because she has sunglasses on, a hat, and a black leather jacket. The woman politely refuses his help, but William still offers it, showing her a book on Turkey, which she seems interested in. As he is looking for another hardcover book, he sees someone on his security camera shoplifting. William goes to the man and questions him about the book he sneaked into his trousers. But the man refuses, William then says he will call the police, and if there is no book in his trousers, he apologizes. The man, who seems hard-headed, asks what happens if he really has sneaked the book into his trousers. The woman listens in on the conversation, as William tells the man that in case he was stealing it, he should either put the book back or buy it. As he walks back to the desk, he apologizes to the woman, and the man who was about to make a burglary steps up, asking the woman for an autograph. The woman, who is actually Anna Scott, an actress signs her name, and below it tells the man, Rufus, that he belongs in jail. He then asks if she wants his number but she refuses, and he leaves the shop sheepishly. William, who is confused by the entire conversation, he hands Anna the book and she leaves after thanking him. He watches her leave and then walks to the window in wonder. His subordinate comes in with the coffee, and William tells him that he won't believe who just came in. But he does not tell the man who it was. Seems as if William actually recognized her. He goes to buy orange juice a few streets down his place of work, but as he is walking back with it, he bumps into Anna again, spilling orange juice all over her white shirt. He quickly apologizes and tries wiping it, but she tells him to keep his hands away. Amidst the chaos, he tells her his house is down the street with the blue gate, and he has water and soap and she can clean up there. She walks inside and so does he, as he quickly cleans the dirty dishes sprawled across. William nervously points her in the direction of the bathroom upstairs, and the telephone which is also up there and quickly cleans the kitchen before she comes back. Anna does not take long, and she walks back downstairs, now in a two-piece, glittery dress beneath her leather jacket. He looks at the sight of her and then nervously starts asking if she wants anything to drink or eat. He rambles on as she says no to everything he offers. Anna then says she should go and thanks him again for his help. He tells her that she probably won't be coming back to his shop after reading the boring book she bought, and Anna just smiles and heads towards the door. He quickly follows to tell her that it was nice meeting her. He then opens the door for her and she leaves. He is left standing alone in his stained shirt. But soon the doorbell rings again and Anna comes back, saying she forgot her other bag too. He gives it to her and they stand in front of each other. She smiles at the nervous man before kissing him deeply, and suddenly, she pulls away as he apologizes for the surreal but nice comment. His flatmate walks in but pays the celebrity no attention. He's too absent-minded for it. Anna finally says goodbye after telling him that it's best if he keeps quiet about this. Later, he and his flatmate sit and watch a movie starring Anna Scott, and William stares at her beautiful face. She looks marvelous. The next day, William gets a customer who wants to buy fiction books from a traveling bookshop, and later spends some time with his flatmate, who is a weird, funny man wearing a weird suit, as he puts on glasses for no apparent reason. William asks him about the voicemails left on their telephone. Among the voicemail is one from a girl named Anna, he says. She is telling William to call at the Ritz and names herself as someone else. William calls the hotel and asks about the actress who is living there under a different name, but the receptionist does not give out information. His flatmate suddenly remembers that she might have called herself Flintstone, and the receptionist agrees to put him through. William quickly says hi, and then talks in a jittery, nervous voice as he asks if he can come around for tea. Anna gives him time for 4 p.m., as he hangs up, gulping, not believing his luck. He walks to the hotel with flowers in hand, and gets on the elevator with another man who strangely seems to be going the same direction as him. They arrive at the same door, weirdly, and William knocks on the sweet door. A jolly woman answers, and hands the two men a brochure. She then asks what the two men thought of a specific movie that stars the actress, and the other one gives his review on it. William, who is confused, goes along with it. 
Turns out, they are both expected to be from a magazine, and William has to lie about his company in order to stay. He then mentions his name and tells the lady that Anna might be expecting him. The woman goes inside to check as the two guys sit in the waiting room, with several other people. The other dude chuckles, seeing the flowers in William's hand, he assumes William got them for Anna, but William lies, saying he got them for his grandmother who is sick. He is finally called in, and the lady says he has five minutes. Anna says hello to him, and accepts the flowers, mentioning the fact that she always checks into hotels with cartoon names. The last time she was Mrs. Bambi. A bald bulky man, seemingly a bodyguard comes into the room and questions William about being from a magazine company, known as Horse and Hound. He then hangs back, not giving Anna enough privacy with her guest. William sits down, getting the gist, and starts asking interview questions to keep up the facade. The bald man leaves, and Anna apologizes for kissing him, saying she doesn't know what came over her. The bodyguard walks back in, and they continue with the senseless questions. After he leaves again, William apologizes for being so stupid, and how this seems like a dream. She asks what he would do if this were a dream, and he says that he would kiss the girl. William asks her if she is busy tonight, and she says that she is. His interview time is up, and he leaves after shaking Anna's hand, she whispers that it was surreal but nice meeting him, and he leaves. But soon, he finds out that he has to interview the other cast as well. He does so, asking dumb questions. As he is about to leave, the lady at the reception calls him in again. But soon, he is pleasantly surprised when he is led to Anna's room. She tells him she is not busy tonight because she lied about her schedule. But William soon remembers that it is his sister's birthday tonight. Anna surprisingly says that she can be his date for the party. At night, the two go to a house, where William's people are introduced to the actress he has brought. No one expected this from a low-key and boring boy like William. Soon, his sister, Honey walks in looking eccentric and is introduced to the actress. Honey tells Anna that she adores the actress and believes they could be best friends. She even tells her to marry her brother so they can be sisters. Another man, Bernie walks in, but much to everyone's surprise, he does not know who Anna is. They talk a bit as Bernie downgrades people who act, but is speechless to hear that Anna got $15 million on her last movie. As Anna goes to the bathroom, everyone quickly talks about Anna being in the house with them. As dinner is ready, everyone sits and eats. Anna seems to be enjoying the simple moments. It must be a change from how she is normally flogged by extravagant things, to be sitting here with simple, British people, lying about how she enjoys the food even though she is a vegetarian. But she still seems to be smiling wider than she does elsewhere. The people at the table start distributing brownies according to how bad they have it in life, and they are about to skip Anna as she obviously makes good money, and lives a lavish lifestyle. However, she says she deserves a shot at eating the brownie, and starts talking about the hardships she has faced in life. Everyone hears it, but they laugh it off, and William calls her effort to hog the brownie pathetic. After dinner, Anna bids goodbye to all the people warmly. Honey hugs Anna and then Anna soon leaves outside with William. After she leaves the people in the house scream with excitement, which Anna and William hear from outside. The two walk outside as Anna jokes about Will's old nickname that his family told her about. Floppy, because of his hair, which could still be seen to be quite lustrous and thick. William asks if she wants to go to his place, but she says it's complicated. She then asks if he is free tomorrow. As he tells her about an area that is off-limits, she asks if he abides by rules, but he tries to act cool and fails. She shows him how to cross over the fence and he does so behind her. Once inside the garden, Anna kisses him again. They roam around with each other, smiling and just enjoying each other's company. Anna sits on a bench that is made in memory of two lovers. She even asks Will to sit beside her, and he does so. The next day, William gets out of the shower, hurrying and looking for his glasses because he has to go to the cinema. He doesn't find them and instead has to wear goggles to the movies, a fact that makes Anna laugh. Later, they sit and have dinner as Anna asks about his divorce. Behind their table, a group of men is having a conversation about actresses. As Will and Anna listen in, the conversation turns vulgar, and one of them starts talking inappropriately about Anna. Unable to hear it anymore, Will walks up to the table and tries to get them to stop. It does not work though, they only make fun of him. Anna takes him away, thanking him for trying to stand up for her. She then gets strength and walks to the table, apologizing to the boys but also insulting them. As they arrive at Anna's hotel, she invites him up. After five minutes, William walks up, kissing Anna, but she tells him to leave quickly, because apparently, her boyfriend from America is now in the room next to her. Just then, her boyfriend comes up from behind and asks Will who he is. The poor British man has to lie about being room service, and he is told to put the trash and dishes away. He stares at Anna, feeling betrayed but not giving it away, and she apologizes and says goodbye. He then goes home quietly, not able to believe what just happened. His heart broke. Anna continues with her job and William goes about his days, he even watches her new movie. One day, Will's flatmate asks him to speak up. He has clearly been quiet ever since his heart broke. 
Will tells his flatmate that he likes someone he cannot have, and his friend gives him useless advice. As Will one day sits with his family, they tell him they knew she was in a relationship. Luckily, they have set up several blind dates for the broken-hearted fellow. There is barely even one that he feels attracted to though. Finally, there is one that he likes. However, he does not feel a spark, and he lets his friends know that. He stays over that night, and goes back home the next day, not seeing Anna's face in the newspapers. He gets a knock on the door, and a crying Anna stands there. He lets her in and as she sits in his house, she tells him of her leaked video, and photos and cries about it, telling him she was young and poor back then, but now that she has gotten successful, they have surfaced. Will patiently tells her it is okay and that she is welcome here. He then asks if she wants anything, and she goes to take a bath. Spike, who is reading the newspaper about her opens the bathroom door, and finds Anna in the bathtub, he is unable to believe it. William and Anna sit together as Anna reads her lines for a movie that she will shoot for in LA, and Will offers to help her with them. Anna spends her time in Will's house in simplicity. He eyes her, as anyone would, imagine an actress sitting across from you. He shows her to the room, where he has laid new bedsheets for her. She says it has been a good day for her and then says goodnight. She kisses his cheek and goes back in. At night, Will is on the downstairs sofa, unable to sleep. He tosses and turns, and then hears sounds from upstairs. Unfortunately, it's just Spike, who tells him to go up to Anna since she has broken up with her, boyfriend. But Will snaps at him and asks him to leave. As Spike leaves, Will hears a sound again, but this time, it's Anna. He gets up and they begin kissing, as he traces his hands down her back. They make love. The next day, in bed, they have a conversation about why men are attracted to certain body parts, and Will does not seem to know the answer. Anna says something about feeling like she does not look beautiful, and William assures her that she looks amazing. She gets up as he stays in bed, but the pretty actress brings him breakfast in bed. However, they do not get to enjoy it because there is a knock on the door. As William answers it, he is bombarded by flashing cameras, it's the paparazzi. He closes the door quickly and tries to stop Anna from opening it, but she does, and the media catches her in Will's house. What's worse is that Will answered the door wearing his underwear, and Anna answered wearing one of his shirts. It is obvious to the media that they have slept together. Anna walks up the stairs angrily and changes back to her clothes. She thinks that Spike is the one who called the paparazzi over, because he is the only one who could have done so. She gets increasingly mad at William, who is trying to calm her down, and even tells the furious actress to have a cup of tea. William tells her that today's newspapers will be in tomorrow's garbage, but Anna gives him a reality check, saying this news will be documented and she will regret coming over to his house. Heartbroken again, Will tells her he will feel the opposite if she allows it. However, he tells her that it is best if she leaves. Later, Spike confesses that he might have told a few people down the pub of Anna being at his house. Will does not react much. The seasons pass by, autumn, winter, and then spring. Outwardly, Will is alright, however, he is depressed and sad and no one knows. One day, his sister drops by his place of work, and gives him Anna's agent's number, saying that she knows he thinks about her, now he can ring her. He thanks his sister, but later on he throws the piece of paper away in a stack of papers. His friends and family sit together, as they toast to being fired. Since they are all making announcements, Honey says she has one to make as well. She says she has decided to get engaged. She has found someone she likes, she calls him an artist with brilliant aspects. She then turns to Spike, and secretly lets him know that it's him she is talking about. Will also makes an announcement, that he apologizes to everyone for his behavior over the past six months, and hence lets them know that he has decided to be happy now. Later as they sit, William's friend asks if he has finally moved on from Anna, and if he has, he won't be affected to know that she's back in London to get her award and film for another movie. William grabs the newspaper in surprise, giving away the fact that he is not over her. The next day, he walks to where she is filming, but the guards tell him they can't let him through if Anna is not expecting him. As he accepts it and is about to head back, Anna walks out, and eyes him surprisingly. She walks up to him, and says that she meant to call him too. He says he just found out yesterday that she is here. Anna says she is really busy and it's the last day of filming. But she would like it if he waited, because there are lots of things to say, apparently. She tells him to have lots of tea as well, hilarious. Anna's secretary, a very nice lady takes William to the set, a Henry James movie, something he once told Anna about. She introduces him to Harry, the sounds guy who hands him headphones, so Will can listen to the lines. As he puts them on, he hears the conversation Anna is having with her fellow actor, who is vulgarly talking about a woman's bottom. Anna shuts him up by insulting him, making William chuckle, enjoyment and adoration in his eyes. But it soon goes down in shambles, when Anna's co-worker asks her about the guy she was talking to a while ago, William. But she condescendingly says he is someone from the past, and that she does not know what he is doing here. Well here's the conversation, disappointment written all over his face. He nods in acceptance over the fact that she really just said that. William hands Harry back the headphones, and says he has to go, walking away from the entire scene. He goes back to his office, continuing his work, but his colleague, Martin disturbs him, saying there is a delivery for him. William walks out, and smiles when he sees Anna. 
She asks how he has been, and he jokes around with her a bit, and then says she has obviously been doing well, because she has apparently been winning awards, but she says it's all fake. Anna tells him that her shooting is done, and she is due to head back soon. She has brought him a present, which seems to be a painting wrapped in brown paper. She tells him to open it once she leaves, and gives a little backstory on how she had it in her apartment and made her think of him. She then continues the conversation by saying that she has to go back to America, but she wonders that if she didn't, would William be willing to see her a bit, or a lot? William mentions how she talked about him with that other actor, and Anna smiles, asking if he expects her to talk truthfully to the most indiscreet man in England. Hearing that, he gets interrupted by Martin, who tells Will that his mother is on the phone, and wants to talk to him. He leaves Martin to talk to Anna while he receives the call. He soon gets back to save Martin from the awkward and shy conversation. William tells her that he is a level-headed person, but he wants to say no to her request. She is surprised by his answer, and says she is going to leave, but Will gives her an explanation as well. He says that he fears his inexperienced heart will not be able to recover if she were to leave again, which she obviously will. Anna realizes that his no is actually a real no. He is actually rejecting her. Before leaving, however, she reminds him that the fame thing is not real, that at the end of the day, she is just a girl standing in front of a boy, asking him to leave her. Anna then kisses William's cheek and leaves. He later sits with his friends and family and tells them about what happened and how he turned Anna Scott down. They unsurely accept what he did, saying he made the right choice. But then the conversation takes a turn, he tells them about her last words to him, and realizes that he made the wrong choice. They all get into a car, trying to get to Anna so that William can fix the mistake he made by letting Anna go. They reach the hotel she was at, and the receptionist tells him that someone named Miss Pocahontas checked out an hour ago, and will be at a press conference before she goes to the airport. William kisses the receptionist's cheek and races back to the car. They drive fast and Spike helps clear the traffic, finally at the place where Anna is holding a press conference. William goes inside, looking for his love after getting held back by the receptionist. He finally reaches the conference hall, and makes his way through the crowd who are asking the young actress questions. He soon raises his hand up, and Anna recognizes him. He asks what she would do if she and a certain William were more than friends, and then makes it known that he has reconsidered his decision to be with her, making her smile. She asks one of the reporters to ask the question about her stay in London again, and she says she will be staying indefinitely. The crowd erupts, clicking photos of William and Anna, as they smile wide at each other. The next scene is the couple getting married, full of happiness and shining. He also attends her award with her, scared out of his mind as he walks across the red carpet with her. They are a wonderful couple, happy, stable, and understanding of each other, as they sit in the park they once sneaked into, with Anna laying in her lover's arms comfortably as he reads a book. 